Bonjour everyone and welcome back to my channel The Waves of Your Soul. Today's video is going to be a roundup of my favorites from the month of March. We're going to be discussing my favorite tarot and oracle decks, of course, as well as some lifestyle favorites such as books, video games, things like that. Just all the things that brought me joy in the month of March. I try and do those videos every month. I really enjoy watching those kind of videos from fellow content creators. There is actually a playlist on my channel with all of my monthly favorites. So if you want to go back and check out all the things that I've been loving, I've been doing them for almost a year now. So you can find the playlist on my channel. I always break those videos down in categories with timestamps. So if you just want to see the decks, you can head straight to that. Or if you want to see everything, you're welcome to stay for the ride. If it is your first time here, hello, my name is Maureen, I'm a French tarot reader and a lover of everything tarot, oracle and self-empowerment related. I love posting videos about tarot and oracle decks, how I use them, how I bond with them, how they help me on my spiritual journey. I also love posting empowering tarot readings, so if you'd like to see any of the things on your timeline, make sure to hit the subscribe button, I would love to have you join the tide. I also have an Instagram and all of that, so you can find all the links to my social media down below. So without further ado, let's get into my March 2022 favorite. Okay, I'm sorry if you're seeing the mic, but I'm trying to get it as close to me as possible because there's a lot of work around there's like houses being built and it's just making so much noise and honestly by the point I got ready I was like it needs to happen now I need to film now noise or not noise because I don't know the next time I'm gonna be able to film so hopefully there won't be too much noise let's start with the biggest event of March the biggest event like you know this is like a global event I'm ridiculous I'm such an Aries sometimes um but really the main highlight of my month of March was that at the end of March it was my birthday. What made it extra special actually, it wasn't just the fact that it was my birthday, it was that on the day of my birthday is the day that my channel reached 2000 subscribers. So thank you so so much. I wanted to take this quick moment to just thank you because it's such a wonderful synchronicity for me to reach 2000 subscribers on the day of my birthday. I couldn't have thought of a better present. It felt very very synchronistic it felt very magical and I'm really grateful and when I think about 2000 people what that looks like in a crowd that's a lot of people <laughs> so um, slightly terrifying but also super exciting at the same time I just wanted to say a huge thank you for the 2000 subscribers also for everyone who comments and also thank you for your kindness compassion and politeness and ability to just be nice kind people I feel very lucky to have such a kind community like I was saying I've had very very little hateful comments in the last year and a half and I find that very amazing just wanted to say thank you for making my birthday so special so that was the first thing I wanted to talk about for the month of March of course I treated myself to some texts for my birthday Hello, have you met me? Um, so actually one of my very close friends that I've met in America, but she's also French. We've been friends for over 10 years and she's gonna come to visit me in Reunion Island in the month of April. So very soon she's arriving. And so she's gonna be my mule <laughs> and bringing me back all the decks that I've ordered for my birthday. Because here with um, COVID already, the post has been terrible. And I don't know about you guys where you live in the world, but with the war in Ukraine as well, things have gotten extremely difficult in terms of shipping and in terms of groceries and petrol, everything. Um, we're getting very few boats coming to the island since the war started. Um, so if you don't know, I live on a tropical island in the Indian Ocean. So most of our goods are imported and getting anything to come is getting nearly impossible. A lot of the shops are getting empty. We're running out of some um, types of food you know I mean it's fine you know we're not in the war or anything like that like we can't complain this is first very much first world problem but just that to say it's impossible to get anything shipped so for my birthday presents from me to me I was like I don't want to take the risk and because I knew my friend was gonna come visit um, and she didn't mind bringing it to me I was like let me just make sure they come and so she's gonna be kind enough to be the one uh, doing the delivery because <laughs> I delivered everything to hers so there'll probably be some kind of a little birthday haul coming up at some point on the channel um, and I do still have in mind some kind of giveaway to say thank you for all the subscribers the comments 
comments etc but because it's so hard to send anything uh, I have the decks here that I want to put on a giveaway but I just don't want to organize it now because it is there's a very high chance that you wouldn't even get the decks because the postage is pretty much non-existent like I was saying either to come to reunion or to be sent from reunion um, and I just don't want to organize a giveaway and the person who wins the decks or the persons because I actually have a, f a few decks to be won to be won is that even a English saying I don't know <laughs> I have a few prizes I want to put up um, as a way to say thank you for my channel etc but um, I'm just waiting for the postage situation to be better because I don't want the winners to never receive their decks. So, like, it's a shame, right? If it would just be a shame. Waiting for the situation to improve. I hoping maybe this year. <laughs> We shall see again what is time I don't even know anymore one last thing I want to mention and then we'll get into my categories so I guess I'll call this category like general chit chat uh, the last thing I wanted to mention is that I know I have not been super present on YouTube in the month of March and might be the same in the month of April uh, for the month of March it was purely due to my health if you don't know I navigate the um, waters of chronic pain I am going through a lot of health issues Issues for the last few years and um, it's been a roller coaster <laughs> let me tell you that the month of March was no different and honestly this is why I was saying I didn't do anything special for my birthday because I was actually in a lot of pain for the like half last second half of March I couldn't really do very much I was in a lot of physical pain um, I'm coming out of it a little bit obviously today I'm feeling well enough to film so that's why I wanted to make it happen despite all the noise happening outside I was like it doesn't matter because <laughs> I don't know the next time I'm gonna be well enough to do that but I just wanted to apologize for not having got around to doing all the videos that I want to do about my French decks, about how I heal myself with decks. Um, I have a lot of ideas and I'm definitely not running out of them. I'm just waiting to get enough spoons and, and to be well enough to do that. Obviously my health comes first and I know that you all understand. It's a long journey. It's been going on for a few years. I am making progress, but it's a tango. We do go two steps forward, one step backward, two steps forward, one step backward. Is that tango? I don't know. It's some kind of dance. <laughs> and it's teaching me patience. And it's very much part of also how I use the cards and how I connect to my spirituality. And so I wouldn't be the same person if I wasn't going through all those head struggles and all of that physical pain. But um, it's obviously difficult sometimes because uh, my mind is well and I have a lot of ideas and I have the drive and the, the wants and you know I want to film because it brings me a lot of joy. I love um, sharing with you. I love creating readings for you. I love talking to you guys on my videos um, but sometimes I can't um, because of my body and um, as well as not just filming I can't do a lot of things and I'm not gonna lie it's it's not easy I want to be very transparent with you and say um, and talk about it because I don't want this space to be the kind of space where we are just pretending everything is fine I want everyone to feel very comfortable that this is a safe space and when I'm not doing so well I'm gonna tell you um, because I feel like I owe it to you to be honest so I you know mentally I'm doing well I'm very well supported I have a lot of love around me but physically it's been difficult and so that's why I've been a bit absent um, and I'm not really managing to keep the schedule I had in mind for my video I think I've laid on for 10 minutes and I haven't actually shown you any favorites so I better shut up and get into it Let's start with books and for me it was very easy to decide what was my favorite book of the month because one of my closest friends, Jen, who I'll post a picture here, we love you, uh, she released a cookbook and we met in England and we've been friends for years. She's a very talented food photographer, food stylist, creative extraordinaire. She's so talented um, and she has been in the food industry for a long time and she just recently released her book clever cookie cutter and i'm gonna put a picture here i can't actually show it to you because i haven't received it yet <laughs> because i pre-ordered it on book depository back in february and i told you with the war in ukraine postage has been 
non-existent. But I can tell you it's a favorite because I've already seen the book <laughs> because I've been following Jen along um, her creative endeavor to produce it to make it and so I really wanted to shout it out because Jen is a wonderful person first of all she is so nice she's so talented she's such an amazing friend an amazing person and she is so talented and inspiring so for all of my bakers out there for all of the people who like crafting and baking um, this the idea of the book is that you can create beautiful cookies like beautiful biscuits with those kind of icing and make a ton of little very beautiful and cute different type of biscuits with only three type of cookie cutters you know the ones that everyone has at their home which is the star shape the heart shape and I think the last one is the little gingerman kind of shape everyone has those and with those three Jen shows you how you can create a ton of different types of biscuits with beautiful different type of icing on them turning all of those into different creations so I'm gonna put some pictures here and unfortunately I can't show it to you because like I said I've not received it yet but I was you know I FaceTime with Jane when she was taking the pictures when she was creating it because she literally made every single biscuit by hand, made them by hand and then she styled them and then she took the pictures. This is a one woman job, she did everything herself and I'm so proud of her. So Jen, if you're watching this, congratulations, I'm so proud of you and I know this is just the beginning and I wanted to shout this out because how often do you get friends who publish this book? I mean, I'm so impressed and I think it's wonderful. You can find it on Book Depository, Amazon, your your bookshops, if you, especially if you're in the UK. That was my first favorite. Congratulations, Jen. I love you very much and I'm so proud of you. I have one video game I wanted to shout out this month. This is on the Switch. If you don't know, I only play on the Switch Lite because it's very portable. So usually when I'm bed bound, I will either be reading or I'll be playing on my Switch Lite because it's very portable it's easy and you can literally play lying down so all the games I ever mentioned on my channel they're always on the switch uh, but I'm sure you can find them on other platforms just you know Google is your friend <laughs> for the month of March my favorite discovery was this beautiful game called Oa I think the creators are Vietnamese I might be wrong but the atmosphere is very much like Studio Ghibli, watercolor, kind of magical fairy tale world. Um, it's a beautiful, atmospheric, relaxing, and very fairy tale like game where you embody this little fairy called Oa. Um, who goes along this journey, um, it's a platform game, you jump around, it's platformer, you solve some puzzles, it's very chill, there's no like time limit, there's no dying or anything like that. Beautiful magical forest, trying to figure out what happened, because when the game starts you wake up on this kind of a little beach and you're taken through to meet all of the people who have helped you escape and you don't know what you escaped from you don't know why you escaped and you don't know who helped you escape but you kind of go back on your footsteps and figure out uh, what happened to this little fairy it's quite a short game i would say potentially six hours you're done five to six hours uh, maybe even less if you are more talented than me <laughs> i'm a bit slow sometimes but it's the kind of game that you don't want to rush really because it's just beautiful. The music is stunning. The watercolor of and, and the aesthetic of the game, the fact that everything was painted in watercolor, it's just so enchanting. And it really spoke to my um, inner child, like it made my inner child very happy. So I really recommend this game if you just want a little uh, breath of fresh air. Like if you just want a bubble, you can play as you go. You, it's not a game that you have to get heavily invested in. You can play a little bit and then leave it and then come back to it. Like I said, it's quite short. Um, but it's just for me it felt like a beautiful breath of fresh air when I was going through a difficult time. It brought me a lot of whimsy, a lot of magic and actually the end of the game is very surprising. I won't spoil it for you but I was not expecting that. So when you think you've finished the game there is actually a whole second part that is completely different and unique and unlike any platform you have done. So it's not just cute and beautiful. There's also a lot of thinking you have to do because it's not easy in the end. At least I struggled a little bit. Still in the platform and puzzle kind of 
world but it's beautiful and I wanted to mention it because it really made my months a lot more magical. Okay so let's move on to tarot and oracle X. So let's start with the deck I used for all of my day-to-day -day readings. So I'd say this is probably the one I've used the most this month. This was the one that I left on my desk that I could reach for all month long and that I even did some tarot readings with for my channel. I'm gonna leave a link or a card somewhere up here. I can't remember if I used it for my April reading or my healing messages reading, one of them. So if you want to see how it reads, I encourage you to watch my reading. Shameless plug. <laughs> I'll leave a card somewhere here. But this is Tarot by Caro. This is an indie deck that I got. Um, I got it from a French indie shop called Roi de Coupe. It's a online shop that specializes in indie tarot and oracle X. I'm not sponsored, he doesn't even know I exist, but I enjoy shopping with his website. It's an enjoyable experience and it comes quickly uh, actually. So I'll leave the link to his website below. I'll also leave the link to the artist's website below because I believe that they also sell directly from their own website. So Tarot by Caro was my most used deck of the month and I love it very much. It, for me, it's become a workhorse. I've had it for a couple of months and I can't put it down. It's literally the deck I go to when I have any question. It's an RWS um, inspired deck so for me being my preferred system it's very easy to read. I love the fact that it's on a black background it makes it really stunning and really like makes the colors really pop. Um, I've actually edged my copy in red but what makes this deck special is the fact that the elements are really beautifully represented in this deck. So for all of my miners especially, we have the ones, the ones and the, especially the court card, they look like they're catching on fire. For the cups, the court cards look like they're dissolving into water. Um, for air, they have like their actual hair, which is so hard by the way, for air, no H, their hair with an H. <laughs> <laughs> it's the shape of clouds and wind and so you really feel the elemental magic, the elemental power in this deck very much so through the aesthetic, through the artist um, way of depicting the card. In terms of a reader it's a very very easy reader for me. It It's very um, on point and very like sharp shooter vibes because it's RWS inspired and the fact that it also of course has people of different skin tones is something I really appreciate so that's also part of why I love this deck very much. There's a modern edge to it but there's also a very classical edge to it and I love this kind of timeless look. Um, it makes it for me like an instant classic that I know I will be using for a long time and that I actually you know I can't put it down I can use it for many things I've used it for reading for my friends they all love it it's one of those that instantly I know it's gonna be a people pleaser and at the same time it's gonna be reliable for me to work with I really love the elemental part of this deck I can't explain it but to me it feels very rooted in air water fire and earth and it really depicts that kind of energy very well. Like when there is too much water, when there is not enough water, when there is too much fire, when there is not enough fire. And it's something we don't always see, I think, in decks. Sometimes the decks focuses more on the symbolism. Sometimes they focus more on the background, like the landscape, or sometimes they focus more on the actual people. This one, I really feel like, even though there's obviously an inclusion of all of the things I mentioned, there's also a very strong emphasis on elements and I find that unique, I find that different and it does give me a lot of hints to work with in the deck. It allowed me to see when was I being too fiery or when was I not in tune enough with my emotions or when potentially was I letting um, my mental headspace taking over and almost, you know, turning myself into a cloud <laughs> to the point where I don't know where my edges are. Um, it doesn't come with a guidebook, like a full-on guidebook, it just comes with a little booklet um, with keywords, but because it is RWS inspired, you can take any kind of book that talks about the RWS and you'll be fine. I think it's a great beginner deck even, because for anyone who wants to learn the RWS and who doesn't really resonate with the RWS aesthetic, this could be a great one to consider. The fact that it has um, people of different skin tone, the fact that the artwork is so stunning, the fact that it's very eye-catching, it's that mix of modern with classic, you'd have to get a 
separate book with it but like I said any book that reference RWS you should be fine to read with this. For my deeper spiritual readings such as my new moon and full moon readings, my birthday readings, so you know I did usually for my birthday I'll do some kind of a um, introspective spread where I'll think about what did this last year almost like a new year new year spread right but with more um, my personal new year <laughs> because it's like my a new start of a new life chapter for me what did the last year teach me what was my main lesson what was the obstacle I came over what is something I can take with me to this new year uh, of life what is something I should leave behind and then um, you know thinking about uh, pulling cards around what is this new year of life gonna bring me, the main blessing, the main lesson, an advice on how to navigate this, what I should be looking out for, you know, that kind of um, spread. I'm not the kind to really always do the same. I'm very much, when I pull the cards, I'll do spreads when it's for big things like this, but it's very much inspired by the moment. <laughs> so. It's, it's a case of me doing some meditation, connecting to myself and then following the threads of my intuition. So I don't have a set spread um, but it's usually along those lines. And the deck I have used for that, for this particular birthday spread and for my new moon, full moon and also for kind of like all the times I wanted to have deeper conversation with my higher self and with my guide is the Crimson Asteria Tarot. This is so shiny. <laughs> I'm probably blinding you right now, but this is a beautiful indie deck uh, that I received, that I backed on Kickstarter. It came from Canada, so I'm really happy that I actually received this one. I've kind of slowed down on the inst in the Kickstarter backing purely because I don't even know if I'll be able to get the decks I back because of the current situation with postage and, ex and everything, but this particular experience was wonderful and uh, you can actually now buy this deck from the artist website. So this deck is created by Pranic Forest and um, they have already created a previous tarot, maybe even an oracle. Their past tarot was called the Solara Occulto or Occulta, Solara Occulta, Solara Occulto, I can't remember. But it's a beautiful tarot deck inspired by alchemy that I missed out on. I really enjoyed it, but it was one of those that, I don't know, I, by the time I was aware of it, it was already out of print. I think they are bringing it back, so maybe when the postage situation is better, I will consider getting it. I really enjoy this particular artist, I really enjoy this particular creator. They um, actually are herbalists, so they use their knowledge of tarot and infuse that with their knowledge of uh, magic and herbalism, etc. to create their uh, decks. They also create oils because in the Kickstarter backing we did, there was an inclusion of, um, you know, a blend of essential oils. So that was particular to the Kickstarter campaign, but it's amazing, I love it, you know, for magical work, etc. That was created especially to go with this deck. We also got a beautiful journal, like we got stickers, it was beautifully wrapped. Honestly, great campaign and highly recommend you checking out this creator because their work is beautiful and it feels very magical. The deck comes in a two-piece box and it comes with a guidebook that I'll come to in a bit. Um, here are the backs. They are very shiny <laughs> so I'll try not to blind you and it came pre-edged in this beautiful red and so all the images are painted with all the different shades of red. So for me, it felt perfect to receive this just in time for every season because this is now my Aries deck. It's the deck for me that represents Aries energy and myself being an Aries sun, I, it's an energy I really resonate with. So this is my Queen of Wands deck, this is my Aries deck and it gives me that fire, that power that I need to be inspired. Um, this deck is very magical and very powerful. So for me, it was straight away clear that I was not going to be using this deck for doing day-to-day -day readings or for even reading for other people. I don't know if I would be able to share this deck yet. Um, I'd have to pick my audience is what, I'm, it was what I would say. Um, purely because it's very deep, um, very powerful, and the fact that it, 
uses a lot of red for me it kind of echoes with blood so it has this very kind of blood type kind of thrum you know that echoes that echoes through our heart that kind of like to do to do to do to do energy that our heart is pumping with fine weaving through the deck archetypes are all painted with a lot of power a lot of fire and a lot of magic we have representations from mythological creatures here such as medusa um, or there's also reference to hecate the three-headed goddess so for all of my lovers of uh, mad you know magic and mythology you'll find some little hints there there's definitely allusion to witchcraft as well for example this five of wands shocking it's definitely not gonna leave you not feeling anything. It will leave you feeling something. This deck is gonna bring up something to you in your core, in your gut. It's a very gut-wrenching deck. Um, it's not necessarily gentle the way it reads, but it's not cruel either. It's just very real and very raw, I guess I will say that. The fact that everything is red, the fact that there's a lot of images that are a bit uncomfortable, but there's also so much beauty in this deck makes this it for me the perfect deck to, like I said, connect to that Aries energy, that kind of Mars warrior-like energy, as well as this kind of more deep rooted, very raw magic. And that comes from connecting with um, the actual life that is thrumming within us. So um, the Kickstarter version actually came with this beautiful extra card. I don't know if you'll get it in the date, in the regular version, but we had an extra holographic Medusa card, which I love. Um, there's also a couple of additional Oracle cards that I think might be included in the normal deck. So we have Sol and Luna and uh, we have um, Asteria because Asteria is actually the name of the game, the name of the deck, Crimson Asteria. So Asteria is a Greek goddess that is linked to ancient divination. So I definitely have been bonding with this deck very deeply. I have been loving using it for all of my more spiritual readings. The one thing I don't enjoy about the deck as much is the guidebook. Not because it's a bad guidebook, it really isn't. For each, you know, it's for each of the card, we get um, a meaning and then we get keywords for upright and reversed. It is just that Sometimes the description on the guidebook doesn't really explain why the creator decided to paint a certain um, archetype this way and I'm a greedy person and I want more. For example, if you decide to depict the Empress on a lion and you make the Empress bold, um, I want to know why. I find it very interesting. I find the artwork stunning and I can see the Venus sign and I can see the stars linked to Venus etc. So there's definitely symbolism here that I can work with and intuitively this deck gives me a lot anyway. Like I said, the artwork is so beautiful and really resonates with my intuition that I have no problem reading with it. But I just wish that there was a little bit more explanation sometimes as to the artistic choices just because I find this deck so intriguing and interesting that I want to learn everything I can about it. Let's move on to my guilty pleasure of the month of March. So, uh, because I was bed bound a lot, I had time and I wanted to give myself a little fun, light-hearted tarot exercises to do that were not gonna be giving me headaches. So it wasn't really the month for me to start digging into thoughts or to try and deepen my knowing of astrology or to try and learn about alchemy and all of that because it was just a, not the month where I had the mental capacity to do that. I just wanted to continue practice my tarot knowledge and you know flex my intuitive muscle all of that in a way that was just light-hearted and fun and not taking myself too seriously. So I decided to um, watch some reality TV shows and to pull some tarot cards to help me figure out what was going to happen. So the tarot deck I used for that was the Pre-Raphaelite Tarot. The TV show I watched to do those kind of like practice predictive readings with was Love is Blind on Netflix. I don't want to be judged, okay don't unsubscribe, I know so many people think it's a pile of shit, but honestly it was lighthearted, very easy to watch reality TV and the best kind of show to watch if you want to practice um, 
predictive readings if you want to practice romantic readings. So if you don't know what Love is Blind is, it's a show on Netflix. I watched the American one and I watched the Japanese one, which was actually so interesting to compare the two different cultural kind of um, experiences, cultural reference, etc. So in Love is Blind, people, real people are being put in booths and being asked to chat with people without seeing them and they fall in love with people without ever seeing them. It's like a social experiment where people are pretty much put in booths to fall in love with people without actually seeing them and by the end of the experiment they get engaged. It's insane. <laughs> Honestly, you know, when you think about it, you're like, why would you ever do that? But it's entertaining TV. By the end of the experiment and they've been in booths, they actually get engaged and then they meet for the first time being engaged. They get to live together for like two weeks before getting married. It's all very, very fast. Like they're put in this pressure cooker environment and then they decide at the end, do they actually want to get married after having fallen in love blind so the experiment is is love blind not doing a great job at explaining it but it's on netflix it's super popular <laughs> like a lot of people are watching it um and if you want easy reality tv watch it's very easy to watch and lighthearted and stuff with tarot it becomes this really interesting exercise because i love being able to practice tarot pools especially around romantic readings and predictive readings because they're not right now my forty at all like it's not something i'm comfortable with predictive reading romantic reading i just don't i'm not it's not a subject i find interesting <laughs> that much um so i that's not the one i practice the most and yet i know that if eventually i want to be a full-rounded tarot reader and i need to be able to read for everything so what better way to practice than to use people who are on tv that you can use for your characters um, because then there's no kind of like uh, ethical issues or anything like that because you're seeing the development of their love story on screen. So I use the pre highlight tarot to practice readings while watching Love is Blind because this tarot was giving me romantic vibes um, because this tarot is it's a Los Carabeo deck first of all I should have said so it's mass market easy to get it's inspired by pre highlight paintings very beautiful a lot of the cards are referencing famous paintings from the pre-Raphaelite school so for all of my art lovers you will recognize a lot of the artwork here that has been kind of like redone but inspiring itself from famous paintings this follows rws so for me it's an easy reader so i was like let me choose a deck that is an easy reader if i look at a card i already know this is a nine of swords this is a six of wands i don't have to think about it so that was one of my criteria the second one was i wanted something that felt a little bit romantic and a little bit like you know giving me that aesthetic kind of love vibe and so i decided to choose this one even though it has nothing to do with <laughs> reality tv it worked really well so i was keeping this deck next to me while watching love is blind and what i would do is when people were so for example when people are first talking in the booth i would be pulling cards around is it someone that they're going to connect with is it someone where is this relation going to go and then when they actually start to get engaged are you going to go through with it are you going to get married or not married if so what are the reasons why you will not get married or why are the reasons why you will get married and honestly it was so on point and such a fun experience and some of the cards i was getting along the way didn't make sense and then you continue watching the show and you see the people evolving in their love story and you realize wow okay now i understand why i pulled the tower or now i understand why i pulled the knight of wands for example and i find this kind of exercise super interesting i've done it before with um like actual TV shows like fantasy based. I hadn't done it before with reality TV, but I find it even more interesting with reality TV because it's real life, real people. And so if you want to practice your readings, you can do that. And I watched the Japanese one and the Japanese one was actually so interesting in terms of um, culturally experiencing a different way that people love, a different that way that people express their love. Um, it was very interesting. I really recommend it actually. Finally, let's wrap it up with the tarot reading I used for study in the month of March. And by study, I mean it didn't go very well. <laughs> 
like I said in the month of March, I was in a lot of physical pain. So there wasn't that many days. Wait, I have a fluffy. I think I have dog hair on my nose. Did I get it? Yeah. <laughs> I did bring out the herb crafted tarot and I did have a good run with it like I, I, I didn't study it as much as I wanted to so I'm gonna have to continue doing that in the month of April but I did get um, I'd say I got halfway through what I wanted to so the herb crafted tarot it's a mass market deck it was created by uh, Julia Powell Colbert and Latisha Guthrie Julia Powell Colbert is actually the creator of one of my favorite decks called the Gaian tarot it was one of my earlier decks um, and so I'm very bonded to this deck things are looking slightly different my battery just died so I was saying that this uh, the herb crafted tarot each card depicts a different plant or a different herb and what drew me to this deck firsthand was obviously the fact that it was created by someone who I really appreciate their work. Like I love the Gaian Tarot so much that I wanted to know what this deck was like. And this deck has been really praised by a lot of people on TarotTube. I've seen a lot of people who said they enjoyed it. And because I really enjoyed nat nature inspired deck, I thought, let me give this a go. I will say it has been a a journey to bond with this deck and it has been difficult and again I want to be very honest with you on my channel some decks if I bond with them very easily I'm gonna tell you and some decks if it's a struggle I'm gonna tell you as well why was this deck a struggle to bond with is because a lot of the plants and that was my concern and I, I decided to try it anyway um, that a lot of the plants depicted in this deck are not local to me at all <laughs> like some of them i've never heard of because this is more inspired by northern american kind of environment and and climate and um, ecological uh, space whereas i live on a tropical island in the indian ocean so the ecological kind of association the plants depicted etc they are very different the seasonal references um the fact that there is a lot of reference to the wheel of the year uh we don't have seasons here there's like hot summer and less hot summer <laughs> you know so um, that was a lot of obstacles i had to overcome i could have honestly given up with this deck because when i started it felt like i couldn't connect i didn't know a lot of the plans i had to try and translate them and then even translating them to french uh, some of them I still had never heard of so there was a lot of research and study required before I could even start approaching it however some of the cards are car are based on plants or trees etc that really resonate with me and that I have a strong connection with here because I actually can find them here so for example there is a eucalyptus card which is the seven of swords I believe yeah, it's the seven of air so the deck is element based so your swords are air and fire is wands etc which makes sense because it's inspired by nature seven of swords is linked to this idea of uh, there's something you're not seeing and there's an underlying kind of potential dodgy something going on or maybe it's you that is lying to yourself or you're not seeing everything that you're meant to you are playing yourself all of those there's a lot to the seven of swords there's a lot more than this but the eucalyptus representing that for me is interesting because we have a lot of eucalyptus forest where i live that was actually um, planted during colonialism um, to remove a lot of the original forest that was existing and it was a way that French uh, colonizers used to um, clean the space that they were in because they considered some of the original forest to be dirty and so they used eucalyptus as a way to colonize again so the <laughs> eucalyptus is um, colonizing plant it was planted over space that was there um, be as a way to cleanse it and as a way of course to um, actually impose dominion and colonize the space even though there wasn't any um, original people living here the union was not inhabited when the colonizers arrived and then of course you know now the eucalyptus plant is linked with purifying we use the essential oil for cleansing it's used even in some kind of medicine to cleanse your when you're coughing when you have a cold you can breathe eucalyptus but it's it's meant to be cleansing and, and a, a lot of us use it for for cleansing things so it's interesting to know that behind it this kind of cleansing space eucalyptus there's a story of it being used to 
take over to plant over some of the spaces and that some of the eucalyptus forests are not uh, natural they're man-made and knowing that there were some cards like this that I could relate to it helped me bond with the deck more um, of course I use eucalyptus now here as a way to uh, cleanse my space I, I will gather eucalyptus uh, leaves that are around and use that uh, to like cleanse and burn etc because it's the plant is still a very useful and wonderful plant it's just interesting to know what is behind it when, and like the story behind it etc for our own good but it's not the plant's fault you know, that it was planted over other spaces so um i guess what i'm trying to say is having some cards that i could so strongly associate to my local environment and make my own correspondences were the lifeline that made me continue trying with this deck uh, but it was not easy because a lot of the cards represent some plants that i don't know so i'm gonna have to continue working with it and read the guidebook and make my own correspondences and think okay what can i compare it to a plant that i have here locally I've, but i've enjoyed working with the herb crafter it's been a difficult experience nonetheless i'm not sure i'm fully bonded yet i'm still trying to study it learn it etc i'm using it completely as an oracle because i every time i use it i read the guidebook because like i said a lot of the plants i don't know the guidebook is really well done there's a lot of interesting spread for each of the cards you get a little message you get activities on ways you can bond with the plant um, and you get an explanation it's most important why is this plant associated with this particular uh, archetype with a particular card and thank god that it's there otherwise I would be completely lost so I think this deck is really well made I think if you are familiar with the plants it will be even easier for you to connect with do I think it's a tarot deck not for me for me it's an oracle deck I couldn't use this deck and pull cards and be like this is what's going on I mean I could if I literally just think about okay this is a knight of wands and I disregard the plant but if I that would be a shame like why use this deck if you don't care about the plant association so right now I'm not in the space where I can use this deck as a tarot it's more of an oracle I also don't feel 100% comfortable using it but it's definitely been opening a lot of doors for me and I'm excited to continue studying it okay this is it these are my March favorites and musings I've been rambling for way too long so thank you so much if you're still here if you're still listening to me I want to say again a huge thank you for the 2000 of you that have joined here more now I think by the time I publish this video so thank you so so much I hope you're having a good month of April and until my next video I hope you take care of yourself I hope you're being kind to yourself and as per usual I'm sending you so much good vibes and keep navigating the waves of your soul bye <laughs>